Hey, what's up? Like, totally time for 90210. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the 90210 show. My name is Mark. With me, as always, is my girlfriend, Carol. How are you doing today? 90210 loving Carol. You couldn't resist. Hey, what's up? <laughs> much it's been a good week it's january 16th 1998 and we are pledging our love to you <laughs> the listeners are we yep ep- this episode is entitled pledging my love we are almost like we're like so a couple days ago now we have not been keeping up with 90210 as it's actually airing because we don't want any, we don't want to be spoiled. We don't want any spoilers for ourselves. But sometimes it's hard to avoid titles or, you know, whatever, stuff like that and everything. And I was just kind of working it out and everything. We are, we're getting closer. We're, We're less than a year, we're less than a season behind. Really? We're about a season behind or so. I mean, we're on season seven. They're on season eight. And okay. we're, you know, we're almost exactly one season. Okay. We'll catch up. I hope so. That would be nice. Be able to watch it with the rest of you. Absolutely. But this episode was called Pledging My Love. I can't remember. Oh, Pledging. Pledging okay. All My Love. To you. Because of the sorority pledges, I got it. Fraternity. But I assume... There were both sorority and the, fraternity yes, pledges. There were, well, there were, yes, there were. there was pledging going on. Yes. But I assumed that the title was in reference to Mr. Sanders. Such an idiot. Mr. Sanders' small day out. <laughs> yeah, that's what the episode starts with, is Steve and his keg brothers... Kirk. During one of the chancellor's speeches, because it's Spirit Week, Arnold Arnold's speech, right? They uh, they cover themselves on their faces, their heads, and their genitals with right. shaving cream. That's right to obscure their face so they're not recognized. Right to obscure their genitals so they're not flashing people. I guess out of modesty, although yeah. what they're doing is streaking, I guess. It is streaking. And it's then It's very 70s. Yeah. And then while they're doing it, the uh sprinkler system turns on and the shaving cream gets rinsed away. Steve so. just stands there. Yeah, like an idiot cuz that's like, what my he is. Penis! And then, you know, Claire like won't let him uh, deny it because she recognizes his penis. Yeah, I made that joke, <laughs> but... You didn't is, think the show was going to make that, that joke? That is what she said. She's like, come on, I, I've seen it before. But I mean, like... I know it bends to the left. It's not like, you know, she was up close and personal. Like, he was across the lawn. You exactly. Don't, you don't think that... I don't know. I think Maybe that, it was like a Pavlovian thing. Like, she saw it, her mouth started watering. <laughs> My God. Wow. She's like, why does that happen? Oh, Steve. <laughs> Gross. So, yeah. So, his face somehow remains covered, but his genitals do not. I guess, yeah. So, Claire's the only one who knows for sure. Well. Everybody knows. Yeah, well, Brandon <laughs> knows, too. Well, It's like, I'd recognize that ball sack. <laughs> well, and Brandon's working for the newspaper, not the newspaper. The, well, the newspaper. For the news television show. Are you just incapable of saying that word <laughs> what? without sounding weird? Newspaper? What do you mean? Yeah, like he works for the news. <laughs> well, the news show. <laughs> Shut up. You're so mean to me. Yeah, they've got a, they've got a cable access news show that uh, they're doing on campus. As we discussed last episode. Right. And he decides to air the tape they have of this mm-hmm. event happening. Right. Which... Because it's more exciting than their coverage of the repaving of the driveway, he says, or whatever. Right. Which, you know, makes sense. Parking lot, I guess. It's not a house, it's college. I have a question, though. Okay. Because this tape exists, 
the school's like, we're going to know who did this. Yeah. We're going to get these people. Mm -hmm. But how? Because if their faces were covered and they didn't recognize them at the time, what are they going to do? Like Cinderella slipper go around and like match up their penises. Like, what are they fucking thinking? (laughs) Look, the the chancellor is going to come with a condom (laughs) down, down, uh, and knock on every dorm room. (laughs) Let's see if it fits. (laughs) Oh my God. No, it's a cock ring. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But seriously, what, why, why? I don't, I don't know. I mean, they showed it on the news. If they were going to get them, they should get them. They should know who they are. Let me ask you a question. They couldn't have shown his cock, right? On the news, no. Because if they had to have obscured that. Right. They would have blurred it out. I assume <clears throat> what he's thinking is he they can make out some features through the... If it's a still image, they can make out some features even through the shaving cream. I'm guessing that's what he's thinking. I agree with you. I don't think it's a slam dunk that they examine this footage right. and figure out who it is. But Claire's pissed because her dad is in trouble because the, the, as he says, the dean of the school, who's, I guess, his, his, her, his boss. Right, I guess. I guess the dean outranks the chancellor. Yeah, it's, we don't know how it works. But I don't, I've never heard of a chancellor cha- outside of Star Wars. Chance- so. <laughs> <laughs> the chancellor, the chancellor uh, does day-to-day operations. Well, the chancellor, uh, you've never really outside of that, huh? Yeah. You, what about Germany? What about it? Hitler was chancellor of Germany. Okay, but that was like being like the president, right? Yes. So the dean outranks the president? I guess. And maybe that's what it's supposed to be like, because there's presidents of college and then they have deans and stuff like that. I guess so. My, the power structure as I see it, I suppose, is that Chancellor Arnold runs the day-to-day operations of the school. The dean is maybe in charge of schmoozing with political figures, getting donations, doing that kind of stuff, but is overall in charge of everything, is the the, the head. And then, but they do a lot of stuff outside of school, obviously, because we've never seen them. And then a, there's a board, too, probably, that runs right. the school. And then the dean reports to the board or, or is a head of the board or whatever. There was definitely a board for the high school. <laughs> Right. I remember that. Anyway, so Donna so, Martin graduate. So as as Chancellor Arnold says, this dean has made her career out of political correctness. And she's pissed. And she wants them charged with sexual harassment. Which is ridiculous. Who were they harassing? Yeah, fucking Clarence Thomas can uh put his pubic hair on uh, a coke coke can of Anita Hills and yeah. And talk about, uh, have you seen this uh, porn guy and stuff like that? And harass her and everything and fucking Senator Biden and all the, the fucking assholes on the Judiciary Committee can uh, slander her and stuff like that. She, the face is just giving me. Sorry to get political, everybody. But anyway, all that can happen to her and Clarence Thomas still gets to be a Supreme Court justice. But, uh, you know, fucking God forbid a... Uh, uh, <laughs> College shooting? A fraternity yeah. uh, go out with the uh, fucking shaving cream on this cock. Yeah, it, it's a bit of an overreaction for sure. I agree. Uh, definitely an overreaction. <clears throat> but they're they're in trouble too for like airing it. Like the new the news is in trouble too. A little kind bit. of a little bit. What happens is is that Brandon like like always happens when Steve does something stupid. Brandon gets put in the middle, right? Where Chancellor Chancellor Arnold even is like, thanks to my good friend Brandon Walsh, we'll have <laughs> we'll have these people in custody in no time. And he's like, hey, you got to give me that tape. And Brandon's like, nah. <laughs> and he tries to talk about like freedom of the press or whatever, and like that they can't take the tape. But then, correct, Chancellor says, no, it's university property, which you know it is. That's the problem. Is that he could stand on journalistic integrity and stuff like that if they were a independent organization, but they're not. They're literally an arm of the school. Yeah. And I think that uh, Chancellor Arnold is correct in that they they own the the stuff. I don't think I don't think he's got an argument. No. What do you think? Do you think he's got any kind of argument journalistically? No, because like protecting they were- his sources or whatever. No, because they work for the school. Agreed. Yeah. So 
the news anchor that they got drunk last week right. um, decides that... She's a hit. She doesn't need to be drunk anymore to do the news. Right. And she's like, hey, I've got a real powerful magnet that could do some damage to that tape. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know magnets could do damage to tapes. Yeah, magnets will destroy a tape. Wow. And a tape player. I didn't know those things. Yes. I've heard about that happening to computers. Sure, yeah. Not that. Anyway. And Brandon's like, no, 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 don't do that. And then they give the tape over, and the tape's destroyed. Yeah, and it, she did it with the magnet. Yeah. Even though he told her not to. So, And then she was like, I want to fuck you. And he's like, hey, I don't, uh, I make it a policy not to fuck coworkers, even though I have literally done that to every single one of my coworkers, basically. Right. Over the course of the last seven seasons. He's like, but now I have standards. And she's like, okay, well, how about a kiss on the cheek then? And he gives her a kiss on the cheek. And he's like, well, you know what? Uh, you're probably going to get fired anyway once, uh, once Mark Reese figures out what you did with the tape, because Reese was all like, fucking let Steve Sanders burn. Yeah, and he does not like him. And so, yeah, so they're probably going to try to get together, I guess. Just yeah. what Brandon needs is another brunette for the <laughs> pile of bodies in the desert. Yeah, well, I mean, he has a pretty healthy mix, I guess, of blondes, brunettes. I'm sure there was a redhead or two in there. I don't remember any redheads. No? No, they don't They don't like hiring redheads on this show. Uh, What's her name? Valerie's friend was a redhead. Valerie's friend. Oh, yeah. Okay. Did they Ginger? do anything? Ginger the ginger? Yeah, ginger. I know she wanted to sleep with David. Did she sleep with Brandon? No. They made out or she was in bed with him at some point or something. Oh, yeah, that's right. She was in bed with him at the yeah. beginning when she, when she was first introduced. But no, they didn't sleep together. And So she's not in the pile of bodies. No. Well, she came back too, remember? Yeah. But she was made a villain. Yeah. She's a redhead that was made a villain. Well, that's pretty stereotypical. And the other one, the other redhead is the... The psychopath that gets the same haircut and style as Kelly. She's the single white female Kelly, the uh, mental patient, remember? The drug addict, mm-hmm. cocaine girl. Yes, yes. With the pictures. I remember her. She was a redhead, too. <laughs> but not for long. No, then she became like Kelly. But she was a villain. Mm-hmm. Uh, also a villain. They hate oh, redheads. That's true. Huh. I wonder if any of them have ex-wives that are redheads. Maybe. Because they definitely do. They definitely do have. Hate them. Oh, okay, I got you. There you go. <laughs> nice job completing the thought. <laughs> so yeah, that's the episode. Noisy chair. <laughs> Sorry for all the creaking there, people. Right. So that's the episode uh, for this week. It is not. Oh, what are sorry. You, you got a hot date somewhere or something? No, I'm just waiting for you to go on. Okay. <laughs> um, the other thing that was happening was Kelly. There's, uh, there's many other things happening. Many? Really? Kelly, Kelly many? was happening. I don't know about many. What do you mean you don't know about many? What about Donna? What about Donna? And Donna and her storyline. Oh, that was stupid. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we won't talk about it. I then. guess. Yeah, let's talk about that one first, actually. And what about, um, let's see. So we, we covered the Brandon, like the Brandon of it all. The Brandon of it all, yeah. With, uh, with Steve. And I guess we kind of covered Claire a little bit. Although Claire was, again... Like, not the nicest person in the world. Yeah, I don't She's like so her. She's so mean to Steve. She really is. She's not supportive. She's very bitchy. She looks down on him. Like, I think they should break up. Like, at first I thought they were going to be good. They were going to go yeah. the distance. But it's obvious that... They're going the distance. <laughs> They're going for speed. She's all alone. Right. Okay. She's going to be all alone. Well, yeah. She doesn't mind her P's and Q's. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, I'm sure she's going to be the one to end the relationship because I think he's much more infatuated with her than she is with him at this point. But it's like, then just let him go. Yeah. I guess there really is only three storylines. Yeah. Because everyone else is intertwined in the other the ones. There but, wasn't a whole hell of a lot going on. Oh, Valerie. Episode. That's the other one I was thinking. I knew there was another oh, one. Oh, okay, yeah. Valerie. The Valerie and her stuff. I knew there was another thing happening. All right. So first, Donna. Donna. Donna is in charge of finding, uh, what would we say? like Pledges. Yeah. She's the pledge director or whatever. And she says, this is the worst freshman class ever, and they may just not have any pledges this year. This like, one's literally Satan. To me, it seems like maybe you just have a bad attitude, and maybe you shouldn't be doing this job. I agree. She's got a bad attitude. Like, how can an entire freshman class just be awful? 
Well, the ones that, that applied that wanted to be part of Alpha House. Or right. Whatever. I mean, not everyone wants to be in Greek society. I didn't pledge a fraternity. Yeah, me either. I got well, asked. you wouldn't. But you I said would pledge no. a sorority. Right. Ooh, you were wanted. I mean, it was, you know, not a big deal. It was on the community college, so I'm I sure guess, it wasn't that exciting. I guess they know that, uh, that we're uh, at least college-aged now. <laughs> or maybe a different age. Um, <laughs> maybe. But anyway, yeah, so she's in charge of these pledges, and she can't find anybody. And then all of a sudden, there appears out of nowhere... A basketball star. A, a blonde, blonde basketball <laughs> star. She looks exactly the part. She looks very much like Donna, just a little thicker. Yeah, she's thick Donna. She's just a little bit more masculine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No makeup. No. I mean, TV makeup, but no real no makeup <laughs> right, for right. the show. Yeah. But yeah, so thick Donna comes up and she's serving them in the in the <laughs> crow's nest or eagle's nest or condor's nest or whatever the fuck they call it yeah and donna's like hey have you thought about pledging a fraternity and she's like uh no i'm an athlete they don't like athletes and she's like well i think you should pledge alpha house and she's like alpha house i've loved alpha house since i was a little girl i just the whole thing is so weird what about this girl was attractive to donna i don't know i think donna's got a little uh a little buy in her or something you think she thought she was hot? I think she's bi curious. She did want to give her a makeover. Yes, she did. I wonder if she would think that lesbian sex wasn't real sex and then she wouldn't lose her. Oh, oh maybe. <laughs> we, found, we found a loophole for Donna. There we go. And she can basically have sex with herself. Thick Donna. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, so she uh, invites this, this young woman. You almost said lesbian. No, oh, I didn't. She invites this lesbian home with her. She invites her to come and, you know, whatever. (laughs) She invites her to come. Oh, my God. No, she's going to be saying, oh, my God. (laughs) Don't stop. You're a dirty man. (laughs) But not a dirty old man. Or maybe I am. Or a different Hmm. age. Well, you're definitely a grandpa, so. Yeah, well, whatever. (sighs) Okay. The the sportsy girl. Yeah, thick Donna. (laughs) Is um, at the at the sorority house talking mm-hmm. to who are these people now? So, like sorority bitches. They're like they're like the council of the sorority or something. Right. They put out a they put out a casting call and they were like sorority bitches right. is what we need. But I mean, it's like some kind of panel that decides whether or not she gets. Have in. you ever seen Heather's? Right. <laughs> Them. And like they're rude and mean and mm-hmm. insulting and it's obvious they think she shouldn't be there. I'm gonna black card this this woman, she says. Yeah, as soon as she walks out the door. And where she like, can still hear her, she's like, Thanks for wasting our time with this dyke. <laughs> I mean, she basically says that. Yeah. She's like she's like, We don't like that type here. And she's like, What type are you talking about? And she's like, Come on, Donna. Athletic, no makeup, <laughs> she's not doesn't have style. You know what we're talking about. Plays golf. <clears throat> right. Where's Birkenstocks? So they all think she's a lesbian. Like but... Kate Bush. But is she? No, I don't think she's a lesbian. No. Anyway, um, Donna, Donna stops them from black carding her. She's like, give her another chance. Let her have another interview. Like, why? If they all hate her that much, this isn't going to be fun and happy for her. Because Donna's got a plan. She didn't say that because she has no one to bounce off this episode, but she's got a plan. Right, because she wants to give her a makeover. Yeah. She thinks that will make all the difference. Yes. Which it does. It does, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, she... she it's she, all superficial. She's trying to turn her into herself, though. It's so funny. She even gives her the same hairstyle with, like, these two little, She like, was going to, but she didn't end up doing it. No, but when she was doing it, she started to do it, where she put the two little... Um, Pigtails or something Yeah, like that. in the front of her head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, mm, no. Not good. And, like, Donna can pull it off. This girl couldn't pull that off. No. And, but, yeah, but, uh, so... And they, they, they make it clear that the girl wants the makeover. Yeah. Because she says, you know, hey, if you want the makeover, I'll do it or whatever. And Donna's like, you know, you don't need to be somebody you're not or whatever. And she's like, no, uh, this is my choice. I want to do this or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, well, yeah. She doesn't understand at first, I guess, that, you know, she can also be feminine. But Her mom died when she was young. Yeah. Did, did she say that? No. No. 
you're being a jerk. I'm, I'm giving so, backstory for her. So then Donna, um, you know, is like, oh, think about all these hot athletes. Like, she starts listening. Donna Half does place. have a crush on some of these people, doesn't she? Yeah, hmm. she mentions the the one uh, Rebecca Lobo, I think, or something like that. I don't remember. There was a lot of female athletes in this episode. Real quick, this isn't a storyline. No, but uh, David's going to to register for his classes. And he's like, oh, man, I registered late. I've got all the worst classes. And all of a sudden, he's like, what do you... He's like, who says this, by the way? And they get her for this joke? Just for, for this. For this one yeah. joke? I figured she'd come back, but she did not. He's like, what do you got to do? Win an Olympic gold medal in gymnastics? Specifically the floor routine or whatever? <laughs> to, uh, to get a good uh, classes or whatever? And then... Newspaper comes down and it's fucking Carrie Strug. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I hope so. With her high little. Yeah, it was a fucked up voice. Well, she, it's because they, they like, I feel like they must do some kind of puberty blocking drugs or something like that. These these athletes speak the special specifically the gymnasts because they always have little boy bodies. They never have any curves. She is short as hell. And then she's got that, you know, the, the that high, that high, like, yeah. like little girl like, voice. It does. It sounds like something is wrong with her when she talks. But anyway, uh, so she's like, I hope it does. I, cause I won a gold medal. And he's like, oh my God, Carrie Strug, I love you. You're the best. What you did was, was great. And she's like, I can't act, but I'm going to read these lines. <laughs> she was terrible. Yeah, it was not good. It was not good at all. But she was great in the Olympics, and we all love her. America's sweetheart, Carrie Strug. Hurts yeah, her, stick hurts to her the ankle, Olympics. Hurts her ankle, gets lifted up by her coach. Yay. Okay. Um, fuck. I lost my train of thought. Oh, okay. Donna wants Donna to have sex and with the, hot athletes. Yeah, the hot athlete. So she does her makeover, and she brings her back for her second interview, and mm. they're like, oh, my gosh, you're right, Donna. We love her. And she's like, oh, too bad. <laughs> she's like... I wasted your time, everyone, because I already accepted a pledge to this other house. And she's like, I just wanted to come and tell you, you guys were my first choice. You should have said yes the first time. Right. It's like pretty woman. Big mistake. Huge. Right. Exactly. And then Donna walks out, too. She's like, and I'm going with her. And I quit. Mm -hmm. Find your own pledges. So. But I think she's still part of the sorority, though. I don't you think, think? She, I don't think she quit the sorority. I think she just quit that that assignment. Oh, I thought she quit the sorority and was going to the other sorority with the lesbian girl. I hope she. <laughs> just assume she's a lesbian. I I <laughs> not stereotyping female athletes at all. I I um don't know. I hope she does, but I, I don't know if that's the case. That would be awesome. But yeah, probably not. The, that thick Donna is who Donna deserves to be with. <laughs> she keeps getting fucked over by dudes. Right? So, I mean, I guess we'll see David around more, though. Maybe they'll get back together. Who knows? Yeah, well. Now that he's registered for classes. Yeah, now that he's a registered sex offender for talking to <laughs> Carrie Strunk. <laughs> right. So, okay, the other storyline is sad. Well, wait a second now. What? You forgot already again about Valerie's story. Oh, okay. Well, this is sad, too. Sad-ish. Pathetic sad. That kind of sad. pathetic sad. So, okay. Although, honestly, to be in in this situation, come on, it'd be okay if you were young. You only think that because you're a guy. That's true. Like, if you were a girl, you would understand why this is not cool. So, it starts out in this dude's car, and she lifts her head up. No, I mean. Wow. Now they're in they're in his car and she's like, That was a great meeting and everything. And well, I think this is definitely gonna be the way to go. And he's like, Yeah. And she's like, I'll tell you what though, I thought my skirt was taking the meeting the way these guys were looking. And, oh yeah. And then uh the the drummer goes And he's like, Oh well, you know, you play up your assets. All right. Like what a way to talk to her. Like, oh, you're a woman in business, so look, you know, fucking slutty so you can get money. Exactly. Like they treat women like whores all the time. They do. And they treat Valerie like a whore all the time. Yeah. But I mean, women in general. also. I'm just saying yes. we, we get the short end here sometimes. Yeah. Oh, you mean in real life? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've 100%. I thought you meant on the show. 
But yeah, so she's happy because her meeting went well. She's getting money for the peach pit after dark. And he's like, hey, I want to take you someplace. To celebrate. She's like, oh, where are we going? Ruth's Chris Steakhouse? Nope. So he takes her, again, not to a real restaurant or anything, but to a sex place. <laughs> Just like we outside, said. The sign outside said sex place. <laughs> Well, no, because I mean, like, remember, like, last time it was like, oh, I'm going to have you for dinner, but he gets room service at a hotel. Yes. That is not the same thing. No, that's sex place. And you don't take somebody to the fucking apartment you rented to be like, hey, let's celebrate. He, yeah. So he opens the door. He's like, this apartment belongs to a client of mine who's going to be very rich and who's going to have a cock in her mouth soon. Right. And she's like, oh, who? And she's like, you, it's yours. I leased it to own in your name. In her name? Yes. He said that? Yes. Okay, well, that's a little bit better, I guess. But, like, how do you do that? How do you buy property for a person and just give it to them without I, them knowing? I don't know. That it's doesn't a, seem like that would it's, work. It's a lease. It's a rent-to-own. It's a rent-to-own apartment in Los Angeles. And he says, you can live here part-time. You can live here full-time. Whatever you want. But this is a place for us to meet. Yeah. Which, like... And fuck. Get the hint, Valerie. If you need a place to meet, mm-hmm. he's not getting a divorce. And she said, oh, I guess I'm a kept woman now. Yeah, and exactly. That's, You're being a whore. And that's the thing is like the show isn't explicitly stating that she knows now that this guy is a bag of shit. Mm-hmm. But she's got to, right? Like as soon as he's like, here's a place for us to meet, he's not getting divorced. Like. His wife doesn't know anything about this. Yeah. He saw her. His dick fell in love with her. (laughs) And his dick was like, oh, let me have it. Let me have it. Yep. And he's giving in. And that like, and so now he gave her a check for $10,000 and he's giving her an apartment. Wait, the check for $10,000. Was that just his money that he's just giving her? Yes. Yes. What the fuck? He said it's a loan. You can pay me back later or whatever if you want. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's no good. Okay, so yeah, Valerie. He said this will help you with your bills until the money comes in for that we're getting from the business deals. Valerie is Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman. Um, I guess. <laughs> basically. My favorite part of uh, Pretty Woman is how she said she charged like $100 an hour or something like that or whatever it was. And... Uh, then Richard Gere hires her for, you know, I can't remember the exact numbers, but if you break it down, like he hires her for six days for like, you know, 10 grand or something like that, effectively lowering her rate to uh, to $20 an hour. Really? Yes. <laughs> I did not realize that. But I mean, it was bulk, you know, yeah. and she didn't have to do sex for it. So. No. And she got a whole new wardrobe. Yeah, that's true. And she did do sex for it. What are you talking about? She didn't have to do sex for it. She did sex the first night. She, she at least gave him a low job. Does she? I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, she does sex for him at the end because she's Cinderella. No, she does sex a lot of times, okay? There is no. a lot of sex happening between no. the two of them. No. I think and you're it is... of a different movie. Oh, no. It's, it's, what were you going to say? It's hot? No. I wasn't going to say that. It's fucking not nine and a half weeks here. Okay. Do you, not, do you remember the scene on the piano? Oh, yeah. That's right. They do fuck on that piano. Yeah. And in the bed. And there's the blowjob in the chair in the beginning. Oh, now I remember the blowjob in the chair where he's sitting in the chair. Okay, yeah, there's more sex in the movie than I remember. Yeah, he is definitely paying her for more than just her time. So, Well, yeah, but I mean, it was uh, whatever. He Like, yeah, okay. I'm not saying Richard Gere was the best in the world there. <laughs> Fucking George Costanza, the one that wanted to rape her. Yeah. So Valerie just grabs the champagne and like, okay, come on, let's go in the bedroom. Like, she's just mm-hmm. like, okay, yeah. this is cool, whatever, I have an apartment now. Like, she already had a place to live, so... Yeah, I don't get this. I don't know why they're doing this. I don't know why they're trying to move her out or anything. Mm-mm. I don't like any of this. And like I told you when we were watching it, I don't, like... I, I They use Valerie like a Swiss Army knife. Mm-hmm. Where it's just like, your, uh, your character needs to be slutty and like it. Okay. Your character needs to be a prude and not like that they're being used. Okay. It's they're they're wildly inconsistent with her character. Mm-hmm. Well yeah, and like she smokes pot when they want her to and she yep. doesn't sometimes and Like you said, say the thing you said. I don't remember the thing I said. Aw, you said if she was a real person in real life, 
she would definitely have a fucking like personality disorder. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure because she changes all the time. Yeah. So, yeah, so she is now hanging out with this guy in a apartment that he put in her name. And, and he's like, I'm coming back tonight to strap you to the bed, so get ready. So she's all made up in a nice dress waiting for him. Well, she said she's going to make dinner, but, yeah. Okay, did she make dinner? Yes, she did. Okay, fine. So she makes dinner. She's dressed up. You know, she's I wasn't waiting. contradicting you, right? I was contradicting myself. Okay. The joke I made. Okay. Yeah, she's waiting for him. He's not there. So she calls his office, and he's not there. So Gets she the answering machine. So she calls his car phone. Oh, yeah. She's got the car phone number. And he answers, and his wife and child are in the car, and he pretends he's talking to his mother. Yeah, sorry, Mom. Mikey's whatever recital got Soccer changed. game, or, yeah, and he made two goals. His, his soccer night game that was at 9 o'clock at we're, night. We're getting ice cream to celebrate. She's like, yeah, you were going to get a cream, but I was <laughs> going to get creamed or whatever. I don't know. Um, insert sex joke here. Right. But, yeah, she's pissed. And then he tries to come and see her at the house with the boys that she lives with. and <laughs> Brandon and Steve. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Brandon gets all weird about this, too. I don't understand. Brandon's like, oh, I kind of remember you. You worked with my dad. And he's like, yeah. He's like, I, I'm, I'm Valerie's accountant. He's like, I didn't know what accountants make house calls. Like, first of all, like, my mom's accountant does make house calls, so it's really yeah. not that weird. Correct. And I've seen Jim do it also. Wait a second. Is your, is your mom... <laughs> Try having an affair with uh, the accountant? I certainly hope not. <laughs> that so would your be mom, weird. your mom did have that. Your mom does have that second apartment, right? 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 Um, so Valerie won't come down and talk to him. She yeah. tells Brandon to tell him that she went out for ice cream, frozen yogurt, frozen yogurt. Okay, yeah. she 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 says the diet version of what they got, <laughs> and um, she went out for TCBY. Yeah, you know what that is. Frozen yogurt. The country's best yogurt. That's I want some now. TCBY, the country's best yogurt. I really want some. We should go get some. I'll give you some frozen yogurt. <laughs> oh, my God. Never mind. <laughs> just, have to, just have to go into a walk-in freeze. <laughs> Jesus. No, yeah, we can get some frozen yogurt. <laughs> Moving on. Yep. Um. So then she shows up at his office the next day, mm-hmm. and she's like, now you can make it up to me. Yeah. Now you can apologize. I get to decide when you forgive me. Because, or when I forgive you. Because now, no, when she, when he can ask for forgiveness. Yeah, that was it. Uh, because now I am embracing the slut because that's what they wrote on this paper for me. <laughs> yeah, and then she just like fucks him in his office. All right. And I think now she, I think she's now embracing the other woman role. I guess. I mean, she definitely has to know now because of the situation. Man, she's got fucking daddy issues. Do you? Th- well, yeah, he killed himself. Um, I don't. Do you think she knows? You think? Yes. Okay. I think she knows. All right. If she doesn't know, then they're making her really dumb. Yeah, I mean, she hasn't had a lobotomy, so. But yeah, so that's Valerie. Okay, so then there's Kelly and Jimmy. Jimmy, right? Jimmy. That's his Jimmy. Name? Jimmy Gold. What the fuck? Jimmy Gold. Is that his name? Yes. Why do we know his whole name? In the credits it says, and whoever as Jimmy Gold. Oh, okay. And uh, Blossom's older brother. I can't remember the actor's <laughs> name, but yeah, Blossom's <laughs> older brother. So Kelly goes over to see him, and everybody looks all, like, solemn, and they're like, you better go talk to the owner person. I thought he was dead. Yeah, for sure. But he wasn't dead. But apparently uh, you well, can actually, switch from, huh? So, real quick, not to interrupt you, but to totally interrupt you, uh, that's kind of the middle of the episode, the middle of his storyline. What? Because she does see him earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. She She's talking about uh, religion. and Yeah, she says, hey, isn't it uh, Jewish New Year? Because she can't say Rosh Hashanah, I guess. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, you know, it's whatever. And she's like, how do you know that? And. She says, my, my stepbrother's Jewish, and I, I want you to go to temple with us. Yeah, so he goes to temple with her and David, and he's t- 
talking about the Book of Life. And yeah, they explain about how Yom Kippur and and that's the holiest day and everything where you you know you say hey I forgive you and apparently you, you have to forgive anybody who asks for forgiveness. They said exactly. And then yeah, they put everything in the Book of Life. The people are going to live and die in the next year. So he's like, so it's already written in the Book of Life. Whether he's going to live or die. Which, you know, it's kind of obvious he's not going to make it a year, so. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. So then, yeah, she comes and visits him, and he's all. He's very sick. And it happened, like, overnight. Like, he got a fever, and now he has, what did they say, leukocytosis? No. No. Uh, it's a pneuma. Pneumocytosis. Pneumocytosis, yeah. So, like, pneumonia? Essentially, yes. So, from having AIDS, you can just go from being, like, fine-ish to, like, hey, I'm going to die now. Yes. Wow. Yeah, because essentially uh, AIDS is a retrovirus that destroys the... It's, uh, if you look at it from a, cellular, from a cellular point of view, it's barbaric almost what this... Uh, what this virus does to cells. I mean, it's mm-hmm. crazy. But uh, so it infects healthy cells and essentially rips them apart from the inside out. Yikes. Um, so you have uh, components of your blood, T cells and leukocytes. They're your body's immune system. It's ability to fight infections and everything. And a lot of times, one of the big risks in AIDS patients, and one of the things that they try to do medication-wise to prevent this from happening is, uh, like, huge drops in your T-cells. And if you... there, There's stuff on us all the time. Bacteria and stuff like that on our skin, you know, all the time. That doesn't affect us because we have an, a healthy immune system that just easily can kick the shit out of that stuff. Right? Okay. Um, but if your immune system suddenly tanks, then you can get sick like that. And it can go from zero to 60. And that's what's happening to him. He yeah. he is just going down the drain. So she asks, she had asked him, I think earlier in the episode, to teach her the card trick that he did. Yeah. And he said, no, that one's going to the grave with me. You yeah. know, Gordon taught it to me, blah, blah, blah. Right. So when she goes to visit him, he's like, give me the cards. And he starts showing her the trick. And yeah. it's so sad and like i cried a oh, lot yeah, yeah. she was crying a lot <laughs> it was it's just like Ball her eyes sucks out. yeah he's hardcore dying so they hired a real actor blossom's older brother whatever his name is can really act <laughs> can really act yes like he's good and it wouldn't have worked if they got their normal caliber of guest star it just wouldn't have been that sad but kelly is good like jenny garth is good in the scenes with him, mm-hmm. even though she's not the best actress in the world, but she's good in scenes with him, and he's excellent. Yeah, and so they have good chemistry. So it works. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's very sad. He's talking about how he's dying and everything, and then he ends up dying. Yeah. So that's the end of Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy's gone. So, so I, I, sp- I suppose his funeral will be next episode, but. Didn't they have it at the very end of this episode? Did they? I don't remember. I feel like they did. I feel like they were walking out of it. Like it was oh, yeah, yeah, her yeah, yeah, and yeah. David and somebody else. Oh, yeah. The funniest thing happened. That's right. The funniest thing happened after he died. Hmm. David, uh, like, you know, walks up on her and she's like, uh, they're in the apartment, the beach house and everything. And she's, he's like, oh, I'm sorry. And she's like, yeah, you know, it's just, I'm so sad. And he gives her this candle and he's like, hey, this is a key. You light this candle. For the dead and, you know, pray for him and whatever. And she's like, okay. And she looks at the candle and she's like, how does it work? <laughs> like, with a lighter. How right. the fuck do you think? It's a candle. <laughs> but no, he, she shows her how to light it and then uh, pats her on the head. Mm-hmm. And she does her praying for Jimmy. Yeah. Sad, though. Yep. So he's gone. So that was her penance. And he thanked her. Yeah. For he said, you know, that she made him so happy, and were, that he had pushed all his friends away and all that stuff. So I mean, like, yeah. it was really nice for him that she was there, and like, whatever healing or punishment for herself she needed, I think she got in yeah. caring about him and losing him. There were some good lines in his little death speech. Where, yeah. You know, she's like, "Hey, you know, 
you have a friend now, we're friends now, that's a reason to live. And he's like, no, that's a reason to die because I don't have to be alone anymore. Yeah. You know, like. Uh, so there was okay, some... don't make me cry again. <laughs> Shit. So there were some good lines, you know. Yes. But yeah, that, uh, that is the totality of the episode. Yeah, oh, it really they, is this time. They, uh, they, did we finish the Steve storyline? Steve was going to confess, but then. The tape got wiped, so uh, he's like, oh, wait, I want to invite you to dinner. I mean, it didn't, we didn't talk about the Steve part of it, I guess, just that the tape was wiped. Who did he invite to dinner? The Chancellor. Ar- Arnold Oh, yeah, Arnold. he shows up at Claire's dad's house and acts like nothing happened. Yeah, good for him. So, do you think she's going to forgive him? I think she was acting like she's going to forgive him. Yeah, I think she's going to forgive him. She she mentioned, she makes a crack about his penis or something like that, and he's like, hey, that water was cold. <laughs> So, and then he was like, I got some whipped cream or something like that. It's fucking dress up day. It can be dress up day. Or whatever. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. kinky sex shit. Yeah. I don't know. I still think that the two of them don't belong together anymore. I don't anymore. like her as much as I liked her before. Mm-mm. No, she's, che- get, she's getting too that, mean. Uh, cheating with that prince was no good. It did something to her. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, that's the episode for the week. Carol, tell people stuff. So you can check out our website at www.retrolatev.com. Do it. And you can write us at latefee1994 at AOL.com. Yeah. And you can uh, share the tapes with your friends. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.